At my title is a bit of a mouthful. It, I'm the Sexual Health and Bloodborne Virus Coordinator here at, at Vacho. Um, and I've, um, what I do is a whole range of stuff with Aboriginal communities across Victoria. We provide advocacy and support around sexual health and bloodborne viruses. We provide um, capacity building for a whole lot of Aboriginal community controlled health organisations around sexual health and bloodborne virus viruses. Um, we provide resourcing. Um, we also do a lot of work around systems change using data-driven approaches because I'm based in the health evidence team. So we support um, a whole lot of organisations to gather appropriate data and then use that data to drive the sort of service delivery that they do. And what's different about doing this in the Aboriginal community versus the mainstream? It's a whole lot more fun. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it I mean, uh, there's so much more, uh, there's a lot of passion and, and interest in the area. Um, and uh, there's lots of needs that people recognise that they need to do in terms of sexual health. Um, like the rest of Victoria, we've just been involved in an STI campaign to try and support young people under 29 years to get an STI. And that's what we're trying to do with the rest of Victoria is normalise that to, to make sure that people get tested and get treated for STIs because you, you, as a lot of people already know that STIs in, Australia, in Victoria have gone through the roof in the last couple of years. We've had record numbers, particularly of chlamydia, um, gonorrhea, and also we see, strangely enough, a bit of a resurgence, a little bit of concern around syphilis. So we're um, trying to support communities to be proactive. We also use things called the PEICs, which are these newly created positions in the Working Together for Health, and they've got a remit to work with um, sexual health. So we've got these really amazing people within Aboriginal health services that can help drive some of that change, that systems change, which is based on data as well. So that's an amazing job. And can you tell us a bit about the fantastically named Sexy Health? Deadly Sexy Health Kit training. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a whole health kit that was designed especially by Aboriginal people, for Aboriginal people, for our communities to do training around sexual health and blood viruses is culturally safe. Um, we want to avoid a whole lot of shame and stigma around that, so we actually support, we have in a really culturally appropriate style of training that's specially designed for Aboriginal people so that they can actually have those uh, inclusive conversations around sexual health and, um, and bloodborne viruses. So we want to make sure that people feel okay and, uh, when they get trained in that area. And it's a lot of fun as well. And if the Premier came along and said, here's $10 million to help with uh, sexual health and bloodborne viruses in the Aboriginal communities in Victoria, what would you be doing with it? I'd go straight to our member organisations and consult with them and say, where, do we, where is that money needed? Because it's quite different across Victoria. So I'd make sure that we consult widely. It's not about me, it's actually about our member organisations and about supporting them to get the support that they need as well across Victoria. Thanks for your time, man. Thank you.